brass tacks. Okay. <laughs> how do you do this? Okay, how do you put this into a room? How do you, how do you make this happen? Um, one of the, the, the things you have in your printout is this, okay? This is from William Ware. He was a uh, uh, architecture professor at Columbia University in 1900, okay? He wrote a book called The American Vignola, okay? Which is basically the American uh, design catalog for classicalism, okay? And so back in here, this is how you're going to help size moldings in a room, okay? So what he's done here is he's taken the uh, Doric, the Tuscan Doric, Ionic, and the Corinthian composite, and see this one, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, that's that one to ten, one to nine, one to eight. That's the relationship of your diameter to your height. Okay, so these are very masculine. They are heavy. These are very light. So you got one to nine, one to ten um, is a very thin, tall thing, right? Are you with me? Do we need to stand up? We need uh, everybody going. <laughs> Um, so then what he's done is he's breaking out there there is uh, this up here is the size of your entablature okay and then these things are architrave freeze cornice right architrave freeze cornice so and then this is your base right and there's if you have a pedestal so <laughs> I know that doesn't make a lot of sense if, it, if you're just doing this for the first time, but trust me, we'll walk through this, okay? So we're gonna take the Doric order, okay? Which if, you, if the thing you've got in there, here's how the Doric order breaks out, okay? So you've got five parts, okay? And one part is your entablature, okay? Um, the, uh, what that means is if we have a 10 foot tall room, each part is two foot, okay? So this entablature, full entablature is two feet tall, okay? 10 foot tall room, the crown, if we did the full entablature, most people don't just do the cornice, but if you did the full entablature, it's two foot around the room. Um, the entablature is broken into, as you can see, uh, into eight parts. See that there? You're breaking the entablature into eight parts. And so each part is three inches, okay? So eight divided by 24 inches, three inches, right? Math there. Um, and then there's a two, three, three relationship between the architrave, frieze, and cornice. So the architrave is two inches tall, the frieze is three inches tall, and then the uh, cornice is three, inch, three inches, or three parts, so it'd be nine inches tall, right? So it's six, nine, and nine. Everybody follow, everybody with me, okay? <clears throat> now, we're gonna take this, these eight parts and we're gonna divide them and we're gonna talk about the size of, the, of these individual moldings. So the door cornice is nine inches tall. We just discovered that on that last page, right? That means, and, and then we see here that, those, that that nine inches is divided into four parts. So we've got, uh, you know, got two parts in the cornice, one part in the, in, see that? One part in the, uh, no, one part in the, <laughs> Slimation, one in the cornice and two in the bed mold. So there's what those parts are. Each part is two and a quarter of inches. That means your crown is two and a quarter inches. So in a 10 foot tall room, you have a two and a quarter inch crown if the, you're only gonna run a crown around that room, right? It's not a three and a half, it's not a four and a half, it's not a five and a half, because if you're in a 10 foot tall room, you go, gosh, I need a lot of moldings up there because it's a really tall room, it's a big room. I'm gonna need more than just a two and a quarter crown around there. Right? So, what do you do? Well, you might end up taking these proportions of these different pieces and you might, let's say the client doesn't have a lot of money, so you're gonna take that full nine inches, right? And you're gonna do maybe one or two parts of this. You might do, uh, a, you're gonna fakery a little bit, right? You're gonna put a small molding as a bed mold, you'll have a little bit of a, uh, a corona, and then you do a crown at the top. Now visually, you should be able to see that because there's only three moldings there, but you are uh, communicating the size and the scale, right? Another thing you could do is you could go back, if we went back one, and remember the, the picture rail, if you remember that thing, is the top of the architrave. It's called the tenia. 
That's the picture rail and room. And sometimes you go into Victorian rooms and they have the picture rail two feet down on the wall and it's not up close tied, but it's down. They've done that because you are introducing an architectural proportion in there. So you could take just that crown and just your picture mail and now you've visually given this line around this room which kind of defined an entablature around the room. Do you see that? Does that make sense? Yes. So how do you know which, which order to use and which stop? Um, when you get uh, familiar with this, it'll be an easier question, okay? Um, but it's hard, right? Like, well, how do I, where do I even start? Um, arts and crafts style houses often use the Tuscan order, okay? Thick, strong, fat, you know, like this, okay? The columns on those houses are often big and thick, right? Those big porch columns that are on arts and crafts house. So there's your eye starting to realize that, okay, arts and crafts is kind of Tuscan, okay? The, the, the French rooms we saw, those are Corinthian, you know, composite orders. They were very high style. Tall ceilings, all that, that stuff. It's gonna be a combination of, um, what, what, then what it's gonna start influencing is size of casings, right? And so most of our clients don't like Georgian moldings because they're too heavy and too strong. Now that's, I'm sure, a, a pattern or a fad that's gonna change, but right now they like federal, okay? Now federal is a much taller and daintier style, so I'm gonna be leaning towards the Ionic and the you know, composite or Corinthian just because I want the scale of my moldings and stuff to be thin and light, okay? So you are, uh, and then there's the, the ornamentation thing. And I've got a slide in here, basically, be really careful about ornamenting and because um, it's just really hard with the uh, materials on the shelf today that are ornamented. But that ornamentation, Inkabald, Inkabald carvings, they're terrible, they're, they're, they're terrible. And so don't use them, you're gonna, you're gonna show off the fact that you don't understand ornamentation, okay? So again, I would, I would, I would encourage you to look at historic precedent. And what I learned when I wrote that book, Traditional American Rooms, and you actually, the sizes of the moldings are actually scaled in that book. And you'll see that Georgian moldings sometimes will project off the wall three inches, okay? Um, post 19, 1900, most moldings, because of standardization of milling machines and things like that, go down to about three quarters of an inch. They're working with one inch boards, they, which come from the mill. It was all a, about, about standardization and about you know, speed and everything else. And so they shrink to about three quarters, which isn't terrible. But if you look back the historic precedent, those moldings I showed you, the French, Georgian, and, and the clamshell, that, that Georgian molding stuck off the wall three inches. Point being, thicker is better, okay? So I would have no molding uh, under, three in, under three quarters of an inch nothing under three quarters of an inch. And if I had a 10 foot tall room, my base would be inch and a quarter, inch and a half even. Because I don't, unless I'm doing something federal which needed to be tall and thin, I want to, I want my base to communicate strength and I want it to, you know, hold up that wall. And so, right, and so basically nothing under three quarters of an inch, bigger is better and it will punctuate openings better. All right, one more, and this is the, uh, the Tuscan order, right? And in this case, this is divided, the wall's divided out into 19 parts, and then you'll see that the pedestal gives you the size of your pedestal, and then the size of the entablature up here, okay? 19 parts, uh, 10 foot tall room, the entablature made up of three parts is one foot seven. I think each part is, what is that, 19 inches, six inches, each, each part is six inches, uh, if you break it out that way. Um, the entablature is broken up into seven parts, right? Uh, there's seven parts there, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then each of the architrave, frieze, and cornice is uh, eight and a quarter, five and a half, five and a half. Now, architrave, pre-1900, all door casings and window casings were called architraves. Now they're called door casings. But it was always an architrave, why? Because the architrave supports that opening, right? The architrave is, is king beam, and so it's the one that the columns the, the hold up, and it was the supporting piece that always spanned an opening. So any kind you have something that spans an opening like that, it's an architrave. And so 
This case, in this room with 10 foot ceilings, that means our door and window cases are five and a half inches wide, right? So, okay, now you're getting a sense of the scale of the, the door and window cases in this room, in this style, and you can start kind of building these moldings in your head. And then, you know, it breaks out the parts, um, and then each part, you know, is two and a sixteenth. There's one cymation, one corona, one bed mold. You can see this break out here, and you start again to get the size and the scale of these moldings. Notice in both cases, the, the crown, individual piece, is small. And so I encourage almost all of my clients to do this kind of crown, okay? It's but basically four parts, okay? Um, and again, this is where you're gonna educate your client because the client may push back, well, why do I need that? No one does that. Well, that's because no one knows, okay? <laughs> and I want you to have a beautiful space and if I just put up a single crown in there, it's gonna look silly. We need a, a full cornice like this, okay? And so you are encouraging them that this is the way we used to build and this is the way we need to build again, but I almost always am putting in a crown like this not just a single thing around the room, unless it's an upstairs bedroom, a kid's room or something like that, where you know that, that's, it's not really that kind of an elevated space. Um, and then the last thing was just ornamentation, that you know this is a, an English room and there's a ton of ornamentation here, right? But we don't really, I don't think you look at that and go, oh, that's gaudy, right? Why? Why do, we, why do they fill this thing up with ornamentation and yet it still looks good? And it's because this understanding, one of my notes was, you know, be wary about ornamentation, but, uh, you know, the bracket is carved appropriately, it's, it's sized appropriately. And this is why that comment about Inca Bald and, and White River is that they, they're clunky and fat and they're short and, they, and the leaves are just, you know, this goopy, ugly leaf. So, <laughs> uh, but there is, there, there, there is a way of doing this. And then this is when you become a student of the past and start looking at this stuff, you can uh, um, get better at it, get more skilled at, at ornamentation. This is right there, okay? You don't even really notice that, but look how much beautiful detail is in there. And this could be done on a CNC, right? Um, this could be manufactured cheaply. That's what I meant by CNC. Yet, it's if, if it's done the proper way, it adds to things, it makes things beautiful and worthwhile.